Hi everyone, my name is Joseph Konskin. Welcome back to my art studio. So for the last little while, I've wanted to do a really nice autumn painting with some really nice fall colors, some bright reds or yellows. And last year here in Manitoba, we had this really early snowfall while there were still fall leaves on the trees. And it just created this really great color contrast of white snow on red and yellow leaves. And it was just great inspiration for a painting. So that's what I'm going to be working on in this video and what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of show you bits and pieces of the entire process of this painting from start to finish. Um, it took me about seven days to do so it's just going to be some of the more important parts and, and just kind of a, a general overview of the entire painting but I'll go from start to finish and I'll describe what I'm doing and I will tell you a little bit about some of the colors that I'm using and just kind of go from there. The bird I've chosen to put in this particular painting is the dark-eyed junco and it's a bird that you would most commonly see at around this time of year and it's it's a bird that's got mostly gray and, and, and white in it and it's just a nice little delicate bird to put in this little scene so um, I'm just gonna hop over to the easel and start painting and uh, start describing what I'm doing. First thing I'm going to do with this painting is I'm going to block in all the colors um, that are going to be in this painting starting with this gray color that's got a little bit of alizarin crimson and raw umber in it. I find that this mixture, especially for fall paintings, tends to really um, work nicely for that, that subdued faded background where it'll help all the reds and yellows in the foreground really stand out. So I'm just going to go ahead and start blocking in um, where all those parts are going to be and just building up that color and just, just getting that, that shape. Blocking in these colors like this just kind of helps me get an overall sense of the painting and just an overall sense of, of the colors and, and sort of the dynamic of, of the entire piece. And all these colors that I'm going to be using to block in are going to be sort of the, the mid-range uh, value of each of each color and I, I just find it easy to do it that way because I like building up the shadows and the highlights on either side of these of these particular colors and so I'm being quite loose here not getting too detailed it's more just about getting shapes and 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 values in just to kind of help give me a sense of the overall color and where each one of these leaves are going to be and to kind of give me a good idea of the dynamic of the entire piece. A lot of these colors might change a little bit um, once I start adding the detail and especially once I start layering over top with some of the deeper richer colors because I want this painting to be nice and vibrant to have that really nice strong fall color and the same goes for blocking in the snow just really loosely but just giving me a good idea of where all the snow is just following my pencil lines of, of what I what I already have the only thing I'll do is I'll just leave the bird for last um, just because it sort of is my favorite part to paint and I, I just like leaving the, the animal for last. So now that everything's blocked in, um, I can start on the background that's behind these foreground leaves and I just want a little bit of a suggestion of leaves and branches that are back there. I don't want it to become too overly detailed because I don't want it to take away from the foreground leaves and snow which will be really detailed. I just want there to be a bit of a suggestion so that it's not just a, a plain gray background. I want it to just give you a sense that there's more leaves and there's more um, branches just in behind this. As well 
keeping it very loose and without a lot of detail just kind of helps push those leaves back and really bring the the foreground leaves forward to give it a, a, a sense of space and to give it some really good depth so I'm just doing a little bit of detail just to suggest the leaves in the back and I hope this will help give it a little bit more of a three-dimensional feel And now once I'm ready to start onto the main leaves, I'm gonna spend a lot more time and a lot more detail. And I just wanna be very, very specific about the, the little veins that are in the leaves and building up some of these colors and some of these shadows. I think it's important to, to still stay a little bit loose so that I'm moving around the painting quickly, but keeping that detail and a lot of that structure alive really paying attention to the direction of light and paying attention to um, the color that's there because i don't want to lose the vibrance of the leaves so i'll constantly go back and forth adding deeper rich yellows to to keep that vibrant color alive in these leaves i want it to be really bright and really vibrant like how i saw it when i when i took my reference photos And this here is an important element, adding these little dark spots and these little sort of blemishes that can be on these fall leaves where they develop these little brown spots and just kind of these little imperfections that just make those fall leaves, it gives the leaves a lot of character when you add these little uh, shadow spots and these little, little dark spots. And then I'll add just some of the brightest highlights, just just in the right spots where, where the light is just striking the top of the leaves. And then an important part coming up here is that the edges and the points of the leaves, some of these yellow leaves had this red tinge just on the edge. And so I just wanted to add that really delicately, not trying to overdo it, but really just help um, bring you know a bit of that red color into the leaves and this this really brought them to life and just kind of made them really pop so um, I'm just adding just the tiniest amount of red to some of the edges just to make those leaves really stand out so now onto the red leaves but it's gonna be a little bit different than the yellow leaves as I'm gonna tackle each one of these separately um, and paint each leaf individually. The reason I want to do this is because each one of these leaves has a little bit of a different red color. They, some of them are more of a, of a brighter cadmium red and some are more of a purplish red. So um, doing each leaf individually is going to help keep that unique color and that color variation that I want um, in each leaf. And the reason being is that I, it's very difficult in a lot of cases to mix the exact same color over and over again. And I want these leaves to have a separate look from each other one. And so I'm just gonna paint them individually and just build it up and keep, and keep going from there. And especially when I go back, uh, a big part of this, as I had already mentioned with the yellow leaves, is I go back and I really deepen the the red color by by using straight cadmium red and just adding a tiny bit of a glaze over top just to bring back that rich color i want these leaves to look nice and vibrant and nice and rich and and really really colorful um, like how fall leaves can can look So now with this main leaf, the, the largest red leaf in, in the picture, is I'm just going to really, I really want this leaf to stand out and to have that really bright, vibrant color. And so I'm even going to bring in some oranges with this one just to really give it that, that vibrant, rich color that it has and, and to really make it stand out. 
it's going to be a bit of a process of of going back and throughout the painting I, I go back and just add more and more red just to kind of really make it stand out and especially once some of the other leaves have been painted I'll go back and just sort of make small adjustments here and there either adding deeper shadows to some or more red colors to others so now I'll just continue on with the rest of the leaves, doing each one individually. And just really building up that detail. And the farther along I go with the leaves, the, the better it starts to look. This can be a bit tedious because doing each individual leaf, it's, it's slow and it's not as rewarding because the painting comes together a lot slower than if you try to do each each leaf separately but I find that color variation that I get from doing each leaf individually pays off in the end because then they all have their own separate color and their own separate look. So now moving on to some of these leaves that are that are sort of half red and half green. They haven't fully changed color yet. Some of the part of the leaf is still um, green. And so what I wanna do with this is that I wanna have a nice gradient from green to red. But the difficulty with that is of course, mixing green and red together gives you a brown. So the way I wanna do this and the way I wanna tackle this is to either paint the green part first or red part first, and then go back and layer over top with the opposite color. And that's gonna give that nice gradient from green to red um, that isn't gonna mix into a brown color. It, can take a bit of time and, and a little bit of patience to sort of see the the end result because you end up doing all the red bits first and then coming back and painting the green in but then it creates that natural gradient that you see in the leaves rather than trying to blend the two together which creates a little bit of like that brown color that I don't want in the particular painting so layering the green over top of the red or the red over top of the green creates that really nice effect. So I'm just going to finish up the last few leaves here and this took a couple of days to do. I, I really took my time with a lot of this just trying to make sure that the light and shadow um, on each of these leaves was correct and especially since the leaves are kind of you know um, flopped over from the heavy snow that there's a lot of different shadow and a different highlight on on each one of them and I just wanted to make sure that it had that really nice 3d look to it uh, of leaves covered in snow here I just go back and add some straight cadmium red just lightly to some of the leaves just to kind of bring out some of that rich red color and to really make that fall color just pop. And same with the yellow. Just kind of cleaning up a few edges and adding a little bit of extra detail and, and just cleaning up a few things. So next I'm onto the snow and what I want to do here is I'm going to add the darkest shadow part first and then I'm going to build up the other colors and the lighter colors and highlights on top of that. And this is just to establish the beginning structure of the snow, where the shadows are going to be and what the overall look of these, of these clumps of snow are going to look like. The other thing I'm going to do with this shadow color is I'm going to build up the the clumps of snow that are stuck on the leaves and even just the little individual droplets and the little bits of snow that are stuck onto the leaves. I just want to establish all this right now so that when I go back and add my highlights, all that base layer work is done so that I know exactly where I want to have all my little bits of snow and then all I have to do is go and highlight everything. So now I've added a little bit of white to my shadow mixture and I'm just going to build up the next color and the next layer. And this is really going to help blend that shadow into that mid-range value that I had when I blocked everything in. 
and already here I'm starting to see the structure of the snow and build the structure of these clumps of snow with this mid-range color. The next step after this is, is to is to start with the highlights and this will really build the structure and this will really build those top edges of the snow and the clumps of snow to really give it that shape. This isn't the brightest highlight color, um, but it's the one that's gonna that I'm using to to create all these shapes and and really build the the structure of each of each bit of snow. So I'm also working quite fast with this color. I kind of want to keep a bit of randomness in the snow. I don't want to get into the habit of doing a lot of patterns with the snow, so I find if I work quickly with this particular color and this particular layer, it kind of keeps me from from getting too pattern-like in the snow. When the snow collects on these on these leaves and branches, it's 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 very random, and so I just want to maintain that random look and that that and stay away from from it looking too like it, there's too many patterns. So for my highlight color, I find that titanium white can be a bit too cool. So I'm just tinting it with a little bit of alizarin crimson and a little bit of raw umber just to kind of give it a little bit of, of, of a warm feel. And the reason I want to do that is that sometimes the straight titanium white is a little too cold. And because there's so much red, in this painting, I want it to, I want the snow to feel a bit warmer than just a really, really cold, straight uh, titanium white would be, and to also give it the feel of there being some reflected light on the snow with how many red leaves there are in this painting. So now I'm just going to touch all the little bits of snow with a little bit of highlight. And this really brings the snow to life and just makes it pop. Just bringing that nice highlight to the top edge of all these little clumps of snow. So now I'm onto the bird and this is my favorite part and I'll do this the same way I did everything else which is starting it off by blocking in um, the the main colors of the bird and and once I have sort of the main colors blocked in then I can start building up some of the details starting with the shadows and just really building the structure of the bird the thing I want to pay attention to the most is the shape of the bird giving it that three-dimensional shape is gonna make it feel the the most realistic um, paying attention to the light and the shadow and following the contours of the bird's body I find that rather than necessarily painting every feather exactly right, if I pay attention more to the direction of light and more to the bird's three-dimensional shape, following those contours, it really makes it look lifelike and really um, helps make it look realistic. So now I'm just building up um, some of the highlights on the bird and just really emphasizing um, that direction of light and, and, and the sh bird's shape and then adding the brightest highlight just on the top edge and on, on the sides of the bird and down onto the back and onto the wing. And of course the highlight in the eye always brings the animal to life so much. And the same goes for the, the body and the belly of the bird is just building up that shape and building up that three-dimensional look this you know the the bird is 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 round and so I want to make it look rounded by emphasizing uh, the contour of, of the way the feathers fall and just the direction of light and and where the light strikes it on the one side there and then a little bit of reflected yellow light just on the bottom because it's sitting next to those yellow leaves and then just working on the feet and I think just a few final details and cleaning up a few little edges and then after that there's just one thing left to do and uh, I think I have a finished painting
So once all the leaves are done and the bird is finally in there and I've made all my last little adjustments, I love the way this turned out. I really did enjoy working on this little fall scene. It was exactly what I was hoping for with the bright reds and the yellows and the little junko sitting on the branch. I just really enjoyed working on this and I'm very happy with the way it turned out. Thank you so much again for joining me through the process of working on this painting. I hope to see you next time in another one of my painting videos. Thank you so much for watching.